episode number 33 of the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. Welcome to the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. I'm Michelle, a fertility acupuncturist here to provide you with resources on how to create a wholesome approach to your fertility journey. So if you tuned into last week, Susan Singer, Alfonso, and I have uh, shared a great conversation of Q&As that we had for each other. She's a dear friend of mine and a fertility yoga teacher. We knew each other before the podcast and have a great relationship and constantly bounce off fertility questions to each other. So we wanted to share those questions and those conversations that we usually typically have over coffee or lunch and put it on air. So we're really hoping that you're enjoying this and uh, tune in today for part two. Okay, so how has podcasting influenced you on a personal level? I love this question. I love, love interviewing people about their stories. Back in the day, I used to have like this interview show where I used mm-hmm. to interview people to for all different reasons, whether it's to really understand how they got to where they are today. And I always ask people those questions and I'm always so intrigued and inspired by everyone's journey. And it's, you know, it's the girl next door. It's, it's not the celebrity or the actor. Yeah. Those things are interesting, but it's, especially with fertility, hearing other people's stories has, helped me make certain decisions on my own path because of what, yeah, because of what people have gone through. Mm, And again, still coming back to me and seeing if it's a right path for me because of knowing that doctors don't know everything. And most of the time you feel like you're just a number. So I love when I hear people's stories and their journeys, like just last week, my last podcast, I had this girl's like she took you on a roller coaster of what she has gone through to have her baby girl. And so, and even, you know, my friend who just, who had triplets through an egg donor, it's like, what? And there's so much out there in the fertility world and Mm. hearing these stories is just, I mean, it gives me the chills. It's so inspiring. So that's why I started my podcast is mainly for you to hear other people's stories who are just like you. And then of course I love talk, you know, I love learning. So I want experts as well. And then my journey, just hearing podcasts and learning from others as well, learning from things, you know, things that you just don't know that, that are, I'm curious about, and it's not just fertility, whatever it may be. I'm always listening to a podcast that is going to fulfill me in a way of, of making me grow and for me to learn a thing or two. So I think it's such a great platform that we have now, especially because how many of us are just are in the car for so long. And now when we're working out, I just think it's so it's, it's, it's so important again to hear other people's stories because I just think they're inspiring and they'll, and I believe that that'll help guide you into the direction you need to go. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. I love podcasts yeah. myself and that's what got me into podcasting and we kind of started around the same time. So it's kind of cool because we went right. through this journey I know. together I've been, I've been wanting to and had each other on and, and uh, we talk about it. We actually behind the scenes. Totally. Like- and I've been wanting to do a podcast for years, but I never knew mm-hmm. what the topic was. And then when this, when everything happened with fertility, I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is what I want to talk about. And then all of a sudden Michelle's like, I'm doing a podcast. And I'm like, what? And that's what put a fire under my butt. And I'm like, I got to do mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it was, it's kind of cool. And then we talk about it. We talk about little like technical things or we just have conversations about it. I'm like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? It's great. I love it. <laughs> Exactly. (laughs) And it's so much fun. I love getting information from you and, you know, your wise self has, has been such a guiding light for me. And I feel the same. It's really, really symbiotic. I think our, we just, (laughs) you know, we get inspiration from each other and it's kind of like that spark and fun conversation of just uh, growth and learning and, and just 
you know, passion about helping others on, on their fertility journey. It's just really a passion for the fertility world. Exactly. And that being said, I think my last question, why well, I always ask this anyway, is why well, I actually have two questions for you is what would you tell someone who is just starting out on their fertility path? And then what would you tell someone who's been on their journey for a while? That's a good one. Um, okay. So somebody who's just starting out, I would say pretty much what I always say is just like tune into yourself and know that this is not something that happens overnight. You know, I think that we've kind of like gotten just on a separate note on a, on a quick fix mentality. And it's, it's not something that happens overnight. It's something that you really want to feed your body and listen to what your body's telling you because your body will give you cues as to what it needs. Um, and not, and, and, to try not to get overwhelmed and Google too much <laughs> because that right. could be very overwhelming. Um, and I mean, advice as far as that goes, you're not saying so much what kind of protocol I would suggest. I would say um, learn about what kind of foods to eat, you know, as far as the physical part. And that's just so like second nature for me to go right into it and tell people like there's certain foods that are really good for you, certain foods that have shown to be in, you know, have an adverse effect to fertility and, um, supplements are important because I know I'm talking more on the physical part now, but like the, the reason I really want to stress this about supplements is I know that our ancestors didn't take supplements and, and people might say like, what is it? Why is it that we are taking so many supplements now? Why do we need supplements? And I think the reason for that is that we are overproducing and I think that the soil just doesn't have the same kind of energy as it used to because we're demanding too much from it. We're over, um, we're overproducing and we're overgrowing. And the soil used to have a lot more nutrient rich qualities and it's not anymore. It's not what it used to be. And the food that we're also used to eating generally is not what it used to be. So even if we're eating healthy and eating plants, the plants don't have the same kind of nutrients because of overproduction. So it is important to supplement. But um, but I guess like the advice that I would give is really to stay in tune with who you are as a person um, and to really solidify that and not allow what other people are telling you, you know, because a lot of people come up with all kinds of opinions to just really stay with the people that are close to you, people that have always uplifted you. Um, and don't get into a conversation with somebody you know that is going to be critical or kind of push you into places that you feel weaker than when you first started. So that that's what I would say to somebody who's first starting out. Mm -hmm. And for somebody who has been going through this for a long time, that's a tough one because I know that there are probably exhausted and have been just all over the map with different advice and, and different opinions. Um, I would say don't give up hope. That's what I would say. Don't give up hope. And also try to solidify your search to not overwhelm yourself, like go and simplify, simplify it really. And, um, and if you're not getting the answers from the doctors or you know, whoever it is that you're, you're going to open up to different ideas. You know, it doesn't have to, parenthood does not have to be your own eggs. It could be other means, you know, what is it that life is telling you? Like, why is there maybe something that's kind of your calling? And I really do believe that. I know not a lot of people want to hear this because they want their own child and they want their own egg and they want, you know, they want it that way. But sometimes I've seen really incredibly miraculous stories about people who have decided to adopt and found their true child. I mean, they really did. They say like, I never would have wanted to do this. I never thought about doing this. But now after doing it, I realized this was a calling, like this child's soul was calling me. Yes. It gives me the chills talking about it. And, I and 
what happened what happened was they get pregnant afterwards is as if like something in the universe was calling them to adopt a specific child or get a specific egg donor so that they found their perfect child their aligned child and i don't know that, that i feel very strongly about that too because there yeah. is some kind of weird synchronistic thing that can happen with that I so I love what you were just saying. Yes, is I truly believe it's it's not the physical form; it's the spirit of the baby mm. of the child, and it comes back to like you said before, like divine timing. It's for some reason like it's not all about you. <laughs> it's yeah. really, really oh not. yeah, There's that's so much yeah that is going on with the timing of when this is all supposed to happen for you. And that's where mm-hmm. it's like surrendering and letting go will allow you to live this path with more freedom and happiness and health. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, totally. And it is uh, it is surrendering because I don't think we're meant to be living in any kind of state of turmoil for too long. Like you can have it a little bit, you know, when sometimes you have something going on or you're going on the wrong path, like you'll, you'll get that turmoil almost to let you know, like, Hey, think about this a little differently. This is how I've always seen it. Like sometimes we go through these challenges and those challenges many times have messages to say, Hey, think about this a little bit differently than you have been. And when you do, it's almost like a little bit of a surrendering or an opening to a different paradigm. Then we grow as individuals. That's first of all. And secondly, we do get called to a certain direction. And when we are going against that calling and against that tide, we suffer over and over and over and over again. And so if you're suffering over and over and over again, it should tell you, maybe I'm approaching this in a way that's not really truly aligned with my highest calling, with my highest self. Right. And I don't think we're meant to live in turmoil. No, I don't either. And we should be in the flow. I know it's difficult Mm -hmm. to find that, but that's how life, we should be flowing. It Mm -hmm. should, there doesn't have to be struggle all the time. And sometimes it's, it's there for a reason because you have to learn something. But I truly believe that if you're doing, if it's the same thing over and over, it's like, okay, something has to change here. Yeah. And it's really you. Exactly. It's, it's you on the inside. Like it's only you who can make that choice. Yes. And, and I'll tell you, I've lived long enough and I've seen enough cases of this where when people have changed it and most of the time it's, they've decided on something that when they first started the journey, they were like, I'm never doing that. I'm never doing that. That is not what I want to do. I don't want to hear it. I don't want anybody telling me that. I'm not doing that. And it's usually that specific thing that they say that they end up doing. And they are like, oh my God, this is like the biggest blessing I could have ever met. Like it's it, the universe has dreamed up something so much more amazing and like vast for me than I would have ever thought. And, and so, that's, so. I've seen so many of those cases with my own eyes and ears and, and heard it with my ears and that I could tell you it's a thing. <laughs> it, it's a, it's an absolute thing. And the universe works so miraculously because so. I, and I always say like, what makes us think that our bodies and our cells, like the things that we're actually able to measure work so synergistically and they have such intelligence. What makes us think that that intelligence just stops? at like at at the body you don't realize that there's this vast intelligence that works everything it works our behaviors it works our life it works everything that it doesn't just stop at our bodies oh yeah that's so true you know it does, it's all connected it's it is all connected that's why it's so important how you, what your thoughts are and what you say out loud because that that's yes. energy in itself so Yes, of course you want a baby. Like, of course you want to be a mom. Of course. But just like anything else in the world, you might want it this way, 
but the universe is offering you an opportunity to have it another way for some reason that you don't even know why. That's where it's mm-hmm. important to just be open. And it's, it's up to you. How I just, li- I was just watching this reality show. I don't even know what it was. She said she's having a surrogate and she had 13 rounds of IVF and eight oh miscarriages. Oh my God. Wow. 13. Ugh. When yeah. do you finally, like her go- Okay. At 13, she decided I'm done. Like, mm. But it's like, what? 13. And that, that's just who she is. Someone might've stopped it. Three, four, eight. Yeah. That's the thing. Each individual being is is different. It's just, it's a matter of just accepting and being open. So you don't have to possibly go through 13 rounds of IVF where you are more in tune with your body and the universe and the energy that's flowing where you can actually be like, I'm going to explore this direction instead. Yes. And, and I have had people that have like, it worked on round five and they said, I'm so glad it worked on round five and not any other times by the time they're holding their baby and they can see the exact genetics and everything that aligned in that specific round five. And that was what was meant to be. And they, they can only see that like hindsight is 2020. They can only see it when they're actually holding that baby. Yeah. Cause they know that I wouldn't have gotten this specific baby had I not gone through these failures and this is this is the child I was meant to have. That is usually when people really see the truth is when they're actually holding the child, whether it's round five or it's it's five years after trying, or if it's um, pregnancy, you know, pregnancy with an egg donor or it's adoption. It's usually once they have that child that they re- realize that everything was meant to be as it was in perfect alignment. Right. Right. It's so true. Yeah. After IVF 13, she was probably like, I'm going to do a surrogate. And when she holds those babies knows that like, that was the way it was supposed to be. It doesn't matter. Exactly. Anymore. Yeah. It doesn't. It's incredibly miraculous and, and intelligent. And also, um, you know, another thing that I just want to kind of finish up with about what I would say to somebody who's been going through this is, um, you know, you know, deep inside of you, you know, the truth of exactly what you should be doing. Um, so just tune in. And sometimes when we ask ourselves questions, our subconscious mind has an incredible way of answering. And if we just ask ourselves that question, like, what do I need to be doing? And sometimes even talk to the child, the spirit of the child, what do you need for me to do? What is it that you are trying to show me? You know, asking yourself those kind of questions, which seem very abstract to many people, and especially if somebody's very scientific mind minded, like more on the logic side, it doesn't matter. Still, just ask yourself that question and see what comes out. Yes, I do that a lot. I always ask and it that. works like magic, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's it incredible. Really it's that when you're that specific and you're allowing mm-hmm. yourself to be that open, it takes a little bit of time. Because you're like, is that my mind? And once you know how to release the mind and just go deeper, you'll start understanding that the answers do flow to you. It's pretty cool. So where do you draw your inspiration from? Ooh, that's a great (laughs) question. Wow. I draw, the first thing that came to mind is nature. So Mm. I draw my inspiration and like when I'm really in my truth myself, I feel so connected to mother earth and that's through when I'm staring at the water, um, the beautiful ocean waves. And then especially when I see dolphins because they're my sign, but now that Mm. I'm looking out the window and I live in Tennessee and I have this beautiful land and these trees and a Creek running through my yard and I can see Hills. I am so drawn to the energy of mother earth in this way of the trees and the birds. And, you know, I went on a walk and I saw deer and I have horses on either side of me from the houses on either side of me. I have these beautiful white horses. That's amazing. I know. I just, I am in my true element and 
when I'm out of my head and not thinking of what other people are doing or what I should be doing because of what other people have done and I'm just with Mother Nature, um, what else inspires me is when I'm in a kundalini, like a really good kundalini class and I'm, it's a form of yoga and I'm doing breath work and meditation and I'm chanting and listening to the gong that those are my two big forms of inspiration for sure. And the great thing is I just, tomorrow there's, I get, tomorrow's the new moon. So there's this new Kundalini studio I'm going to check out in Nashville to do like this new moon workshop thing. <laughs> so, um, beautiful. yeah, that's really when I get inspired. Um, I'm trying to think what else also, even this like interview, when I talk to people and I interview people and I'm doing something that I absolutely love that I know is really being of service and I can feel myself light up to where I just want to hug the other person that really inspires me to keep flowing in the direction that I know is my highest vibration, my highest self. I love that. That is so great. Awesome. So I think that we're, I think we're kind of running out of time. <laughs> yeah, I, think that's a, I mean, we again, we can keep talking. I, you know, I can talk more about Mother Earth and spirit babies and 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 all that. Oh, I we could we could we could do this for hours, and this is exactly what we do. And I always feel like whenever we get together for lunch or like talk, it like never is enough time. <laughs> It is. And this is awesome. You know, this is the thing. It's like we leave and I'm so pumped and excited about, you know, even, you know, my path, my fertility journey. It, you're just, because you're in the flow. Like we're, we're just in the flow when we talk about this stuff. So I'm hoping that our audiences, when we share this, you feel a sense of connection to both of us and knowing that we're, we're here for you. We love you. We're, we're offering you you know, a little insight of what we know professionally and personally. Yes. And also if you guys like this and want more, cause I'm like willing to do more of these cause I love it. I'm having yeah. fun. <laughs> Let us know, you know, email us, um, you know, our, we're going to put our information on the episode notes. Right. And if you guys like more of this, we'll do more of this because, and we're putting this on both of our podcasts. So Exactly. So you can learn more about Michelle and mine, and I'm excited to meet your audience. Um, we've both been on each other, uh, each other's podcasts in the very beginning um, and when we started out. So it's great to revisit and chat more, but yes, I, we would love to get some feedback on what you think about this. Awesome. So Susan, I, this is amazing. I mean, of course, like I could continue. I mean, I have so many other questions, so I would like to do this again. Yeah, I'm right <laughs> you know, there with you. Definitely. Set a date. Yes, let's just do it. So <laughs> fantastic. Um, this is really fun. I really enjoy yeah. this podcast a lot. Me too. <laughs> and so, yeah, we'll be having more of these in the future for sure. So that concludes today's episode. You can find all the links mentioned on the episode notes. If you're enjoying these episodes, please take a moment to leave a review. Reviews are everything to podcasters, and I will be giving shout outs to the usernames of reviews on future episodes. You can find me on my website at www.thewholesomelotus.com. And please be on the lookout for my online course and program, which will be available online soon. This course has emerged from everything that I've been using for the fertility program I now offer at my office. I wanted to consolidate all of my suggestions and coaching and put it into a form that anyone can purchase and use. It was important for me to encompass key fertility health factors as well as guide you on implementing changes in your routine that are shown to boost fertility while being realistic and user friendly. I will be offering this course with and without coaching. If you're interested and want updates as well as a free ebook on my top 10 fertility boosting habits, you can visit my fertility page on www.thewholesomelotus.com where you can find the subscription form. 
I'm also offering a discounted pre-registration price for a limited time. If you're interested in that, you can contact me on my contact page. I thank you so much for listening in and hope you have a beautiful day.